In Chicago, they call it putting the cops on the dots. Others call it hotspot policing. And all across America, the approach has played a critical role in dramatic reductions in crime. The concept is simply this. Most crime is committed by a surprisingly small number of people. Target those criminals and allocate your resources to putting them out of business. At the core of this concept is information, knowing who the criminals are and acquiring enough evidence to make arrests. That's where Chicago stands out. Police officers there have invented an information gathering and dissemination system called CLEAR that not only has driven down crime in Chicago, but has empowered police officers across the nation, not with guns, but with laptops. CLEAR is the, the citizen and law enforcement analysis and reporting system. It's really about automating a majority of the functions that police officers, investigators, and command staff members engage in on a day-to-day -day basis. 15th of July, that's where we had the three officers that were shot. Location is the west end of Lacrosse, west end of Lacrosse. 10-4, thanks, Am I still your charm, or am I just bad? Here in Chicago, we opened our own fusion center in April. Are we just getting more lost? We're using it to fight gang bangers, drug dealers, armed robbers, other criminals who terrorize our communities. The officer on the street is actually empowered as a problem solver to use the technology to identify problems and develop strategies on their own and then call in other resources when needed. We get lied to a lot on the street here by the uh, thugs and the gang bangers, the drug dealers, the drug buyers. It's going to catch up to a vehicle and run a plate, 883-3651. So I would punch it in. It's been a huge tool to see who's telling the truth out here. When I first came into uh, my first district after coming out of the academy, I remember I was at the district desk and I was watching a police officer at the desk using uh, preschool scissors and paste to cut something out and put it in a book. And I asked what that was for and they said, oh, this is how we provide information to the roll calls. And I remember thinking that there has to be a better way of doing this. We do have a streaming video I want to show you, and we also have a, a district intelligence bulletin. i got to go over it, but let me uh, quickly bring up uh, last night's incident. Officers responded to a domestic call. It was around Laverne and Adams. I believe she was in her 50s. Um, had a rifle. Uh, the domestic is about who's going to have power of attorney from the family. This lady, the, turns out to be the offender, takes a shotgun out, and she cracks the 78 year old lady in the head opening up her head. They're running up the, store, uh, up the stairs, they hear her jack a, uh, a round in. And she began to shoot at the officers. The, the door opens, she fires a shot at them. All three officers sustained uh, gunshot wounds. They return fire and the ultimate uh, thing is uh, she's deceased. They're all okay. The officers then, as, as she then began to reload, that's when they return fire. First, let's compare scars. I'll tell you whose is worse. Let's unwrite these pages and replace them with our own words. We live on front porches. This information uh, bulletin up here, real quickly, shows the latest. Crime occurs when there's a convergence of motivated offenders, potential victims, and the absence of guardianship. We have uh, 1506 Adam paying special attention over there today. That is, by the way, as you know, one of our uh, mission spots that we always run. Clear System allows the information that uh, officers are gathering either through contact cards, that's where field interviews done on the street, or the arrests that they make on the street. That information can be used by other units, detective division, etc., within hours after that arrest is made. We use the Clear System to help us map out the uh, hot spots in the district. The notion of hot spots policing is the uh, widely regarded as, a, as the cutting edge approach. At my fingertips, I can pull up the uh, last shootings for the last several days, the shots fired call, the gang disturbances, the narcotic sales, and then use that information to deploy my troops where they need to be. Which means police no longer just randomly drive around through communities. Uh, they are deployed by management to areas that are known to be hot spots of violent crime. So using the CLEAR system allows me to put the cops on the dots, focusing my manpower where it needs to be. Take a look at what's going on. Uh, I check, like, uh, shots fire locations. You know, we have a lot of uh, problems with gang activity. Uh, 
narcotic offenders, sellers, buyers, uh, gang violence. I was an Area 4 violent crimes detective in the mid to late 80s. If we uh, had to get information on an offender's past arrest, we'd have to drive all the way downtown. Before, if you wanted to get an arrest that was from years ago, you'd have to uh, make an inquiry to records division downtown. We'd have to fill out a form to get pictures developed for us. We'd have to fill out a form to get arrests. It may take a few days before you get that information back. Now you can get that information almost instantaneously. Now it's all at the uh, fingertips of the officers and the detectives. They can get it right from the computer. I have it at my fingertips. Uh, I don't have to call the zone every time I need to get information. It's been a huge, huge change. Uh, when I first came on, we didn't have all this. We had the very old computers that were unreliable. Um, we didn't have any access. Like if somebody told you, you know, my name is Joe Blow, and you know, you, you know they're lying to you, but you didn't have any way to match it up. Now you can, you're going to get get a name from a guy, and then you can go right to the clear system, and you can match it up to see if, uh, you know, if the guy's telling you the truth. And it I, it brings up the picture of the person with the iClear system. When they see their face on the screen, because of this clear system, it's uh, it's like, oops, you know, they, they, they remember, the, you know, some of the old time offenders, they remember how they used to be able to get away with that. It tells you if uh, the person has tattoos. It gives you all the pertinent information to make yourself more efficient when trying to determine if you have the right person or okay, not. Okay, we're going to go over to, uh, I believe it's West End and Laporte which is uh, an area that they just had a, a narcotic gang intelligence uh, that's called Operation Iron Hammer. This is the 15th district. Our number one crime has been drug activity, and the reason being is because of where we are ge geographically located. We're in close proximity to the expressway. We had a lot of drive-through narcotic traffic from the suburbs, and because of the situation and the setup of the streets, you know, we weren't able to put undercover officers in the locations without them being spotted by the drug dealers. In that area, we had grammar schools, many churches, and the senior citizens were primarily uh, prisoners in their own homes. So Operation Iron Hammer is an example of how technology comes together to help inform and implement our smarter policing strategy. The community became proactive. They gave good information. But these guys were high, it was a highly sophisticated operation. Using the clear system um, and analyzing things like calls for service, incidents, arrests, and gang intelligence information, a problem area was identified, uh, and then appropriate technology resources like the pods were used to conduct actual street level operations. Over my right shoulder is a pod camera. In the 15th district, we have approximately 31 right now. They're used to assist us with policing and also to help with the disruption of narcotic sales and gang activity throughout the district. We can watch a, uh, an area that is a, a concern f for the community with uh, drug problems, drug dealing. We could watch it from the district. We can call a car and say that, the, for example, the individual with the blue shirt and the uh, blue jeans is, uh, is keeping the dope by the fence over here. Relocate the football on top of my Panasonic notebook. Open it up. We have what is called a football. It's a briefcase sized joystick type uh, electronic equipment that uh, the officer can uh, park up to like maybe a block or two away from the pod. And as long as he's got a line of sight with it, he can direct with his joystick what's going on. He can see the whole operation. I control the camera. I zoom in, I can zoom out, but they, they can't see me, I'm a block away. You couldn't drive down this street because of the bumper bumper traffic, just from people coming in from all parts of the city and suburbs to buy narcotics. If we could actually get close enough in there to surveil the illegal activity, you know, weed out the good citizen from the citizen that's causing the trouble and focus on that particular area and that particular group and know who the key players are. This was the first instance where we actually used the pod to zoom in on these guys and actually saw hand-to-hand -hand transaction. We got numerous license plates and it actually came in to assist us in areas where we couldn't put policemen, so it was very, very effective. Uh, there were 22 arrests made and one individual, there were 19 buys from him, and another individual, there were 17 buys. Operation Iron Hammer is just one of thousands of operations like it and many others that happen every day throughout the city. Am I loud and clear, or am I breaking up? Am I still your charm, or am I just bad luck? Are we getting closer, or are we just getting more lost?
house. And crime is a bit of a cat and mouse chess game, where if they go there, sometimes crime will move. But this system allows them to quickly detect where crime is moving to. The activity does get pushed, but that's where we, along with the community, figure out where it gets pushed to, and then we can address it there. Because we know we're going to displace them and they're going to go somewhere, so we make sure we follow them. We're beginning, we're entering a period now where we can forecast crime, uh, where we can predict where crime's going to be. I think at the time that the original planning was, uh, was starting for the clear system, there was an assessment of, of what technology was being used in other police departments, and there was general consensus that there, there just wasn't anything out there that did what Chicago needed to do. We started out doing this as an aid to the officers to automate everyday functions they do in their daily business and it has grown beyond what we have ever imagined. There was no off-the-shelf solution and there was no best practice that we could look at that was as comprehensive as our vision was for what technology could do for the, for the city and the department. The Chicago Police Department has been very fortunate to have a set of people who are technologically sophisticated. We're not just bringing in consultants who have no knowledge of the Chicago Police Department or the policing business. But it also requires a commitment from the city and from the top people to make technology a priority in the 21st century. In many communities, these thugs are a much bigger threat to the average citizen than a terrorist group from around the world. They can call uh, up images from the city surveillance cameras, computerized maps, international satellite news that can be of great use to police officers on the street. This is our observation vehicle. It's used for larger events. The tower is actually a mast that goes up 42 feet. As you can see, you can read a license plate off this car right here. This vehicle is a mobile satellite vehicle. Uh, we use this vehicle in order to connect to the network as well as to clear. The video that I'm looking at on the screen right here is actually being streamed back to the Chicago Police Department iClear system. This is Chicago's Police Department's license plate reader. It has two cameras affixed to the top of the vehicle. Before we had this vehicle, officers would actually have to manually type in each plate they saw. That would take minutes to come back from the database. Now, within a matter of seconds, it goes down the street and it can read every plate on both sides of the street at 30 or 40 miles an hour. Obviously, all this information is very useful in combating terrorism, but it's a primary focus when fighting day-to-day -day crime. But technology is only a tool. It cannot solve all the problems by itself. Public safety or an education, public health or any other area of concern. We still need dedicated, hard-working police officers. We freed up 20% of an officer's time just through increased efficiencies. It may not seem like 20% is, is a huge number, but when you look at the 13,500 officers that we have, that actually translates into 2,700 police officers freed up that might have been doing administrative tasks that can now be on the street working in the communities to solve problems. And indeed, violent crime has gone down dramatically in Chicago over the last couple of years. So we see a continual reduction in violent crime, property crime, all types of crime, and we think technology has played a, a major role in that. For me and for most of my staff, the reason that we stay here, it, it's not for money, it is out of, it's a sense of commitment to wanting to see uh, technology help make the world a better place and I think that's what drives us and the chance to share this with other departments not only in the U.S. but throughout the world makes it even more rewarding. Yeah, right at the location is the west end of the cross, west end of the cross. 10-4, thank you.